This week on Christian World News, an Easter terror attack in Pakistan kills scores of people, including children. We'll show you who did it and why. Plus, narrow escape, how these missionaries survived a bomb blast. The difference in life and death was only a matter of seconds. If you had a same-sex couple walk into your church and say they would like to get married, what would your response be? And the pastor answers tough questions about homosexuality. Hear what he had to say about gay marriage. 여러분 안녕하십니까? 크리스천 월드 뉴스입니다. 얼마 전 파키스탄에서 기독교인들을 겨냥한 자살 폭탄 테러가 발생해 300명 이상이 죽거나 다치는 참사가 발생했는데요. 이번 주 많은 기독교인들이 모여 사망자들을 애도하고 희생자 가족들을 위로하는 시간을 가졌다고 합니다. 크리스천 월드 뉴스 오늘의 첫 소식입니다. Hate disrupted the holy day in Pakistan. A Taliban faction claimed responsibility for the Easter Sunday bombing, targeting Christians, including children celebrating on rides at a park in the eastern Pakistani city of Lahore. What could be more painful than this? Almost the whole family is gone. My sister, her husband and daughter are killed. My two daughters and son are wounded. The death toll from the massive suicide bombing has climbed to more than 70 with at least 300 wounded. As Christians buried their dead, Islamic extremists rose up in protest. They're angry that the Supreme Court overturned the death penalty against Asiya Bibi, a Christian convicted of blasphemy against the Prophet Muhammad, and over the execution of a man who murdered a state governor for calling for an end to blasphemy laws. Our demands are hang a Sia Bibi and enforce Islamic law in the country. The Prime Minister has promised to bring the killers to justice, but that's little comfort for Pakistan's Christians who are living in fear in their own country. Nowhere we are safe, especially seeing the Christians, I feel really, really sorry and sad. Mark Martin, CBN News. 네, 정말 충격이 컸을 텐데요. 파키스탄 기독교협의회 다우드 샤리프 회장과 이 화상통화를 통해 현재 파키스탄 기독교인들이 이 충격과 슬픔을 어떻게 이겨내고 있는지 좀더 자세한 이야기 나눠보겠습니다. Everybody is full of sorrow and uh, with a great grief. And uh, uh, as you know, Easter is a, a feast and uh, the day of celebration. But when we look in the Christian colonies, everywhere we see silent sorrow and broken hearts. People are very, very broken. People are are totally hopeless. Uh, So they are just silent. They are not expressing anything. So people are silent. Uh, The global church must pray for the Pakistani Christians. They must pray and uh, they must think to, to help the Pakistani Christians. And ever, whatever they have, whatever in their capacity. I feel the government also has some, some sort of reservations because we are the minority over here and uh, they, they must take care of the demands and thinking of the majority. So sometimes we feel that uh, the government uh, is weak. 벨기에 브뤼셀에서도 부활절을 일주일 앞두고 발생한 테러 공격으로 차분한 분위기 속에서 행사가 진행됐습니다. 더욱이 브뤼셀 테러를 자행한 테러범들이 당초 부활절 다음 날인 28일에 테러를 계획했던 것으로 알려지면서 충격은 더큰 상황입니다. 벨기에에서 전해온 소식입니다. It's become an all too familiar ritual. Just like the Parisians following last year's terror attacks, Belgians set up their own memorial. This is the Place de la Bousse, the site where many of the Belgian people and others have gathered to honor the victims of the terror attacks. As you can see, it's filled with flags, flowers and candles. Many people have come here to reflect and remember. Even days after the attacks, many of the Belgian people are still in shock. I think even if we knew something was going to happen, Everybody's always in shock. I mean, a terrorist attack is based on terror. They want to have the people to be in terror, and I think this is the game. Personally, I think that it is the most important threat, the worst situation since 45, since the end of the Second World War. We never faced such a threat. Despite the failure of politicians or police, 
many Belgian churches continue the battle in prayer. And Lord, we ask over the city of Brussels and the surrounding communities, uh, your divine protection. CBN News has learned intelligence experts believe the bombings that took place on Tuesday were originally planned for Easter Sunday. They believe when police captured Paris terror mastermind Salah Abdeslam, the terrorists decided to act. This pastor believes the church needs to be prepared for a new reality. We know that what is happening in Brussels is not unique. We, we live in a new day, we live in a new age, and uh, our Lord and Savior told us that there would be tribulation in the last days. So we accept that, we understand that, but we also know that we have a mission, we have a job to do, and that's to preach the gospel. And so we're going to keep doing that. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Brussels, Belgium. 그리스 공항에서 폭발한 폭탄 두 개는 수천 명의 삶을 바꿔놨는데요. 기독교인 선교사 두 명도 이날의 테러 공격으로 인해 불과 몇초 사이에 생사가 갈릴 뻔한 아슬아슬한 상황을 경험했다고 합니다. On the morning of March 22nd, Rocky Gainwright dropped off his friend Jeff Slaughter at the Brussels airport. Jeff entered the arrivals hall just moments before the terror attack. So I rolled up to the kiosk, pulled my knapsack off, and turned around to pick up a suitcase when I saw a bright yellow flashing light. And then I heard a big, violent boom. And then just three or four seconds later, there was another big boom. And that's when the ceiling tiles begin to rain down just all around me. All of the glass just shatters outward um, and just comes hurling at everybody. But people were running into my car because they were not paying attention. They were just trying to get away as fast as they could. I was about maybe 30 feet from a door. And I think my mind just told my body, get out. But Jeff didn't know how bad it was. This lady was over there holding the door open, and I could see that she was an airport employee. And in my naivety and shock, I said, ma'am, do you think that we're going to be able to go back in and, and leave today? And she said, sir, the airport is broken. Rocky didn't know what happened to his friend. I just put Jeff in the building, and I just couldn't imagine what I had just done. So I pull my car up and I park and I'm thinking I may have to go in the building and just pull him out. About 15 minutes later, they reunited. But we found ourselves right by the triage center. So I was just like, these people need help. So we just began to talk to this one airline employee that had a cut over her eye and blood all down her face. And so I just walked up to her and I said, can I pray with you? Do you believe in God? And she said, she says, well, at this moment, I do now. After the attack, the haunting question for many, including Jeff, what if? I could have easily have walked down to Starbucks and been right in the middle of all that. I would have been right there. During their Sunday Easter service, Jeff's local church prayed for him. But well, we thank you for sparing his life, and we thank you, Lord, for allowing him to be with us this morning. You have to think how blessed you are to not have gone through that, but at the same time, it, it really makes you think, um, wow, that could have been me, you know, and my heart just goes out to those people and those families that are missing loved ones and that are in the hospitals and that are burned and hurt and their lives have been torn apart. Jeff experienced the fragility of life. It's in God's hands and we just have to trust him through the difficulties of those times and um, trust that his grace is sufficient, um, even in the darkest hour. Rocky sees an opportunity for the church. I think this is gonna shake Belgium. I think it's gonna shake our comfort zones so that we need God. We actually realize that we need God and that there is no protection outside of an eternal security that happens in your heart. That's what Belgium needs to know. And I want the Christian community to stand up and give that to them. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Brussels, Belgium. Thanks so much, Chris. Coming up in Malaysia, Muslims who convert to Christianity risk their freedom and even their lives. Now that could all be changing. Malaysia 
미국 오픈더 선교 회 데이비드 커리 회장과 이 소식에 대해 좀더 자세한 이야기를 들어보겠습니다. We feel like this is a good precedent. People should have the right if you have freedom of religion, which Malaysia says they have. then they should have the right to decide for themselves if, if they can be followers of Jesus or any other faith for that matter. What did ex-Muslims do before this ruling if they wanted to be Christian? Well, they, they lived in a great tension because many of them could not uh, come out publicly as Christians. They couldn't attend Christian churches uh, because if they did, then those churches would be uh, under threat of violence or even Uh, some government persecution. So there's been a real tension on what it means to, to decide for yourself what your faith is. If you had, to, had been born in, in an Islamic family, Islamic faith, registered as such, you were sort of stuck in that caste system. So in the past, it's been very dangerous to be a Christian in Malaysia. Absolutely. Uh, and not just from is Islamic extremist groups, although that is a small portion of the community, but also from the national registration and from the government rules, which can really hem in and make it difficult for a person to decide for themselves what they believe. Does this recent court ruling mean Islam in Malaysia is more moderate, David? Uh, you have moderate forces in Malaysia uh, that are part of the government there, part of the community, certainly. Uh, I don't think we can read too much into this except to say that you had a just ruling by the court that this person as an adult should have the ability to choose for themselves what they are as far as their faith identification. Now, it's going to be challenged likely by Islamic uh, groups. It could be, certainly, and you could have even the National Registry challenging it. So we'll see what happens, but for, for now, we take it as a good sign. I'd like to see this happen in other Islamic countries like Indonesia and some others within the region. Okay, David Curry, the CEO of Open Doors USA. Thanks for joining us, David. Thank you. 한편 예멘에서 이슬람 극단주의자들에게 납치됐던 가톨릭 신부가 살아있는 것으로 확인됐습니다. 인도 IBB CNN의 보도를 통해 알려진 소식인데요. 인도 정부는 이슬람 극단주의자들로부터 신부의 몸값을 요구하는 영상을 받았다고 합니다. Father Tom was taken by Muslim militants who attacked a Catholic retirement home in South Yemen. They also killed four nuns. Rumors circulated on the Internet that the priest had been killed on Good Friday. However, the source of the story, the Cardinal of Vienna, has since recanted his statement. 한편 쿠바 감옥에 수감됐던 한 목회자도 석방됐다고 합니다. Pastor Mario Barroso was arrested hours before U.S. President Obama landed for his historic visit to the island. He was detained during the president's visit and denied food and water. Hours after the president left, Barroso was set free. Hundreds of other political and religious dissidents were arrested during the president's visit. 영국에서는 매주 토요일 새벽 3시부터 5시까지 기도회를 드리는 교회가 있다고 합니다. 이 교회는 새벽에 소음을 유발한다는 이유로 벌금을 내기도 했는데요. 그럼에도 교회는 이 기도회를 멈추지 않을 계획이라고 합니다. 악의 세력이 가장 활발하게 활동하는 때가 바로 이 시간이기 때문이죠. It is a ministry that's much needed today and if people are struggling, I, I do tell them that they need Jesus to help them. For those that don't believe, I pray that they never have to deal with that. But the truth is there are so many Christians and so many non-Christians that struggle with this and I point them to the scriptures and let them know that at the cross, Christ set them free and that they are able to partake of that freedom. 한편 부활절 당일 국제 가톨릭 TV 방송 이터널 월드 TV의 창립자인 마리 안젤리카 수녀가 사망했다는 소식이 전해졌습니다. She began her media career in 1981 with a religious TV show broadcasting from a monastery garage in Birmingham, Alabama. That grew into a worldwide TV, radio and publishing operation. Mother Angelica was 92. Up next, a pastor's approach, how to stay true to the Bible and still reach gays with the gospel of grace.
동성애와 동성애자의 권리를 놓고 전 세계적으로 논쟁이 뜨겁습니다. 이에 CBN은 최근 기독교인의 관점에서 본 동성애를 주제로 특별 보도 기획을 마련했는데요. 가장 먼저 교회 지도자들의 역할을 살펴봅니다. 어떻게 하면 동성애자들에게 복음의 은혜를 전할 수 있을까요? If you had a same-sex couple walk into your church and say they would like to get married, what would your response be? I would say I want to talk to you at length about this. This is worth more than a soundbite. And then I would share with them how I respect their conscience and how God is shaping them. And, but I, I also ask them to respect my conscience. And my conscience would not allow me, because of a, my view of the Bible, to officiate this marriage. You would decline? Oh, I certainly decline, without doubt. Do you consider homosexuality as a sin? I consider, not only I consider, I, I think the Bible is categorical on it. That homosexual acts are unequivocally sin. But you, I want to add to that, so is premarital sex, so is pornography, so is fetishes, you name it. And the, the list is gigantic. So yes, it's a sin, but to isolate it out of, a, out of a larger Christian sexual ethic, to me, uh, is unfair to the... To, to, to having a civil discussion about it. How do you, in, the, in that scenario that you've described, how do you then help the church better understand, better articulate what our faith says about the issue of homosexuality to the public? I would encourage them first to exhale. Meaning? Homosexuality has been around <laughs> in every generation and in every culture. So this is not a new phenomena. Exhale, we don't have to defend God. The biggest part, George, is the attitude of the heart of the church. Do we love sinners? Do we love them? And if they're homosexual or not, do we love them? When you first began in the ministry, did you deal with these kinds of issues? Nope. Never discussed, and when it was discussed, it was done in a in an unkind way. You have jokes, and you know I, I passed it a long time. There are men that are effeminate, that are living celibate lives or are living heterosexual lives, and they have been bullied and pillared since they were in junior high, and that ain't right. How have you advised your leadership on tackling this issue? Right. The best statistics I've heard re- is that about 2% to 3% of, a, of, a, of an average population would confess the same-sex attraction. And um, so our church, that would mean we'd have 100, 200, 300 people that are coming to Sunday service. The vast majority of them not confess this same-sex feeling to anybody. Would you want to share your struggle with a pastor that's condemning, that's angry, that would be shocked? You see, until somebody can confess their sin without embarrassment or laughter, they're never going to share it with you. And if we're going to be missional in a postmodern world, we have got to exhale, process our philosophy of ministry, and see this as a divine opportunity. To me, me, I think it's been a wake-up call. Because the church needs to, I think, reevaluate how we approach all sinners. Come out of the ivory tower. How... Do you have a relevant gospel where you're still prophetic that right is right and wrong is right, and yet you're pastoral and say, I love you unconditionally, even without change? 6년 전, 버락 오바마 미국 대통령은 백악관에서 부활절 조찬 기도회를 시작했는데요. 올해 부활절을 맞아 오바마 대통령은 테러와 전쟁으로 고통을 받고 있는 이들에게 그리스도인들의 사랑을 베풀어야 한다는 메시지를 전했습니다. As part of his Easter message, Uh, President Obama explained how his Christian faith renews him with the hope of redemption. Because of God's love, we can proclaim Christ is risen. Because of God's love, we've been given this gift of salvation. The president addressed the fear and division often born of terrorism, but warned Christians against the temptation to turn their backs on Syrian refugees in need of help. That's the intent of the terrorists is to 
weaken our faith, to weaken our best impulses, our better angels. If Easter means anything, it's that you don't have to be afraid. We drown out darkness with light. And we heal hatred with love. And we hold on to hope. Reverend Dr. Raphael Warnock of Atlanta's historic Ebenezer Baptist Church delivered the sermon. Jesus said he came to preach good news to the poor, to open the eyes of the blind, to set the captives free. Uh, and so by praying with our feet, uh, I mean in the best of our tradition that we ought to be engaged, organized, bearing witness to God's kingdom of love and justice. And as his presidency winds down, Mr. Obama offered a glimpse into his future. After a, a, a good chunk of sleep when I get out of here, I'm going to be right out there with you doing some work. Uh, so, so, so you're not rid of me yet. Uh, even after we're done with the presidency, but I am going to take three, four months where I just sleep. Jennifer Wishon, CBN News, the White House. 오늘 준비한 소식은 여기까지입니다. 저는 다음 주에 다시 찾아오겠습니다. 시청해주신 여러분 고맙습니다.